I've had this piece of ash for over 10 years, probably 13. So I decided I'm going to take this little piece of ash and make me a box. Not sure what I'm going to use for the lid yet. Face plate ring. Drill this out. I'll come back after I get it mounted. Okay, let's get this thing round. I'm going about a thousand RPM, even though it's on a face plate ring. And it looks stable. I'm using my face shield as always. Almost got it round. I don't think this is ash. It's too yellow. This could be Osage Orange. I know it's hard stuff. I think this is Osage Orange. Told you I've had it a long time and it wasn't labeled. I thought this was, from looking at it, I thought this was ash because of the grain, but no, it is not ash. It's Bodark, Jose Jordan. That got it round enough for now. Flatten this bottom off. Okay, got that pretty flat. Make my mark for my mortise. This is short enough as it is. I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna part this and make the lid out of this. I'll have a lid, I'll make a lid out of something else. Not sure what yet. Doesn't have to be real deep. Okay, got my dovetail. Being this color, it could be two things. It could be mulberry, it could be Osage orange. It's harder than mulberry, it's Osage orange. just for stabilization. How do I want to shape this box? Now let's make a little simple angled box. I reground this gab a few weeks ago to 4040 and rewatched some of Stuart Betty's uh, videos on how to get the best effect out of this, and I think it works. Before I go any further, I'm going to stabilize these cracks with CA. Who wants to buy this diamond ring? She took it off her finger now. It doesn't mean a thing. This diamond ring doesn't shine for me anymore. And this diamond ring doesn't mean what it did before. So if you've got 
someone whose heart is true. Let it shine for you. I don't know why that song is stuck in my head. I'll let that dry for a little while so I don't fling CA all over me. What I'm going to do, because this is all nearly ingrained and it's really hard anyway, I've got a little tear out there, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of passes with a texturing tool and give some texture to the side of this. I think it'll make it pretty. I'll be back in a little while. Okay, I'm happy with that shape. I've had this piece for 13 years. It was covered in wax, so it should be dry. But I think it may have moved a little since yesterday. That's all I'm going to do to this right now. I'm going to sand up the outside in the morning. Probably put some kind of finish on it. Then I'll turn it around, hollow it out, and we'll do the lid. I just burnt my logo in the bottom. So I'm going to sand that up a little bit. I've toyed with the idea of using a texturing tool because this wood is so hard and putting a texture in this. But I like this shape the way it is and I just really don't want to do that. Let me turn my dust collector on. We'll get this sanded up and turn it around. And I'm sanding in reverse because it pulls the dust away from me better. And now I'm going to hit it with, you know what? Some have said they find act to be a little grabby. I don't, but I think maybe it's just me. Yeah, it's a little grabby, but it should be if the grit's working. And as the grit gets smaller and smaller, it should ease up and get less grabby, which it does. For example, if you put a piece of, say take a piece of a 100 or 120 grit sandpaper and stick it to a piece, it's going to be grabby. It's going to grab. That abrasive is going to grab and cut. That's what it's designed for. This is the same way. And as you get finer and finer in your grits of sandpaper, you'll notice that they're less and less grabby. Well, again, this works the same way. See, comes back clean. That's what you want. My line is thin. That's what I wanted. I didn't want a thick one. Man, that looks good. It feels good. See how that shines? Can you see that? This Osage Orange will, even though it's yellow now, it'll brown up quite a bit. I'm not going to hit this with the polish and restoring paste. I may later, but right now I am going to put Howard Feed and Wax on it. And then I'll let it sit about 20 minutes and then come back and buff it up. So what do we do while we're waiting on this to dry? Coffee time. Good stuff. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. I love, really love how Howard Feed and Wax gives the wood a natural luster. It's not an outrageous plasticky shine like lacquer or polyurethane or whatever. Let's turn it around and hollow it out. Got my logo in it. After a few minutes, that wood will relax a little bit around those jaws and I'll retighten. Okay, before I tighten this up, I want to figure out my depth. This is the Jimmy Clues Mate 2 undercutter. That's what I'm going to use. 
at least for now. Before I get too carried away, I am going to double check the tightness of this shut. Before I do anything else, I want to define my opening. Okay, I've got my rim defined. I want to make it just a little deeper. That'll do, donkey, that'll do. It can be a little grabby, it's undercut, I mean it's angled. I actually bought this for use in my, well I bought it to do small hollow forms and I, and, for, and if I need it for use in my uh, elbow tube. Okay, I gotta apologize again. The fat boy is stupid sometimes. See, I'm doing the inside and you're up there. You can't see nothing, can you? Dummy. Let me get the other camera going and I'll get back to you. Okay, you should be good now. And it's smooth. I got all the ridges out. I don't see any serious toe marks. Let's sand the inside of this up. And then we can concentrate on what I'm going to do for a lid. Now one thing I didn't do on the outside of this, I didn't put sanding sealer on it. So I'm going to get the sanding sealer on Like with the outside, I'm going to get the inside of this. Howard feeding, Howard, not Howard's, Howard feeding wax. Wait 20 minutes, come back and buff it up. Okay, I'm going to use this lathe for the time being while I'm waiting on that to dry over there. This is a piece of Chinese tallow. Get it round. Should be able to tuck that up. Let me make it round and see if it's big enough. That's pretty close, so we'll move it to the other lathe after I get that polished up over there. Because it's time. Time to polish. Ooh, doggy. That is pretty. Oh, Sage, can you see by the lathe's blinding light?
Now, I could leave this wood like this with the spalting, but I don't want that character to take away from that shape. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dye this black. Several people said, if you want to ebonize something that's still at the grain show, well, there's not really much grain in there to show. This is what you want. Speedball India ink, super black. So, that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to let that dry for several hours and then I'll hit it with axe abrasive paste after I drill my hole for my finial. So while I'm waiting on that to dry, speaking of the finial, if you watched my last video, you saw this piece of Kamani. I'm going to use this for the finial. I was sanding in reverse. I'll never cut with it in reverse. Took some figuring out. <laughs> because I'm stupid. Much better. Probably getting in the way. Let me do it this way. Yes, this is Howard feeding wax. Stuff soaking it in. Okay, I'll come back to this in about 20 minutes, buff it off, pull this out a little bit and cut that part it off. Now let's change this over and drill the hole. It's still ebonized and you can see some of the figure. I think it's all right. It's not cold black, but that's okay too. I mean, it is in some places, but it's not in others. Now, we'll let that set 20 minutes. Okay, let's buff this up. So here it is, my Osage orange box. Yeah, I know the finial is a little dark right now for this, but this is going to turn brown over time, and then they'll match a little bit better. I, you know, I ebonized the top. It was China berry. This is I'm China berry. It's Chinese tallow. Uh, this is what it looked like before I put the dye on it. 
And yeah, I mean, I could have left it like it was and it probably would have looked all right because of all that spalting. But I, I don't know. Kamani finial, yes, I broke another one. But I, I just got it too thin and grabbed hold a little bit too tight when I was sanding. You know, that's the way it goes. Uh, the inside looks really nice. It's got some really nice chatoyants. Got my logo burned in the bottom. I mean, this thing, it just nuts. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. So thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. I really do. Please like, share, and if you're so inclined, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, it doesn't cost you a thing, and it really helps us out here. If you'd like to support the Missy Studio in any way, as always, in the description below, there's a link to uh, my PayPal me. You can make a donation. You can go to my website right here and buy swag, shirts, caps, coffee mugs. Uh, some of the things that I've turned, this box may be up there as well. You can click on the affiliate link down in the description to Amazon. And any purchases you make by going to that link, I get a few pennies of it. doesn't cost you any more. They just send me a few cents off of every sale, and that helps as well. All of these proceeds I use to help me continue what I'm doing out here in the Macy Studio. Uh, sandpaper, finishes, resin, that sort of thing. Oh, and don't forget, uh, if you want to try that Axe Abrasive Paste and Restoring Polishing Paste that I didn't use in this video. I did use the abrasive paste. I just didn't use the Polish and Restoring Cream. Go to this website right here. Get a 10% discount off your order. Again, I really appreciate you watching, folks. Uh, we're still in crazy days right now, so please, please, please be safe. Uh, follow the guidelines that we're given, and hopefully we'll get over this thing in a week or two or three or whatever. I know it, it, it could last a couple more months, but it, it will get better. Things will get back to normal pretty soon. Again, God bless. I pray you're all safe. Y'all come back.